welcome dr fisher welcome and we welcome you to chandigarh ulit kala academy and uh, we are very privileged to have you here and to learn through your experiences uh, your understanding of indian miniature art and your amazing work in indian folk art uh, i would like to begin with uh, how did your interest develop in indian art in india particularly accidentally <laughs> it was not planned i come from an anthropological family my father was a professor for eskimo inuit art and west african art mm -hmm. my grandfather is an anthropo was professor for anthropology in berlin university before the war mm -hmm. so i have that family background in anthropology i studied anthropology and i did my first field work in west africa in liberia okay uh, first time this was in 195960 mm -hmm. and then again in 1963 mm -hmm. and i had just delivered my phd thesis at basel university mm -hmm. when i was called to my professor's office mm -hmm. there was an indian lady okay. sitting uh -huh. and she asked me I didn't know who the lady was at that moment mm -hmm. and she asked me what time of work I had done mm -hmm. and I had done in Africa documentation of pottery mass carving weaving and other mm -hmm. crafts and crafts persons mm -hmm. and at that tea time the lady asked me whether I would come to India as a consultant to the National Institute of Design the lady was Gira Sarabai okay. and she was at that time building up the first body of teachers mm -hmm. and at that time NID was not called NID but NDI okay. National Design Institute okay. and we were then functioning in a Corbus here building there too in, okay. in the Paladi mm -hmm. Museum mm -hmm. top floor mm -hmm. so it was three weeks after I got my PhD that I landed in Amdabad mm -hmm. and if uh, Gira Ben would not have been from Ahmedabad, but from Mexico, I would have landed in Mexico, possibly, you know. Okay. So it was really not <laughs> it my was intention. It was coincidental. Mm -hmm. Okay. But mm -hmm. I was very fortunate that mm -hmm. this happened. Mm -hmm. And in I, I met Hakubai, who was mm -hmm. already working at NID, and I was called to show him mm -hmm. a more academic approach or a more professional approach mm -hmm. to how to document handicrafts mm -hmm. so I was his teacher he was my teacher and, mm -hmm. and, and we functioned very well and, and did research on mm -hmm. rural craftsmen in a village in Saurashtra in Ratedi produced mm -hmm. a very fine book which is published by NID mm -hmm. and became friends and even the next years we worked together After a full year at NID, mm -hmm. I returned to Germany. I was then teaching at Frankfurt University, Heidelberg University. Mm -hmm. And then from 68 to 71, I was returning to India as the representative of the University of Heidelberg in India. So what work uh, brought you here from the University of Heidelberg? Was it again the uh, tribal uh, art? No, in mm -hmm. principle, Mm -hmm. My job was to support mm -hmm. German scholars if they wanted to, to do research in India mm -hmm. uh, by getting them working permits or putting them in contact with Indian institutes, etc. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, I was not, there was not much of a demand for me, so I was free to, to do my research again. Mm -hmm. and. I could organize with the Heidelberg University that the office was in Delhi, but mm. my home was in Ahmedabad again. Okay. So I could rent a flat next to Hakubais. Mm -hmm. And we did again field work, this time in Surat district in south mm. of Gujarat, mm -hmm. where we worked on Adi local Adivasi groups. And mm -hmm. the theme that time was to study the 
objects which are used for rituals. That means okay. terracotta mm -hmm. for as votive offerings, uh, sculpture, sculpture, sculptures of crocodiles as mm -hmm. local gods, etc. And this was a fantastic field work of which we have not published much. much. And at the same time, mm -hmm. I was collaborating with the Calico Museum of Textiles and did research on a double ikat patola production in Paten, as well as on other uh, textile crafts. So, when I was in India in mm. 71, I was informed by my Basel professor that the job of the director of the Riedberg Museum was open mm -hmm. and I applied mm -hmm. and from today to tomorrow I became director of a quite an important art museum but I'm, as I said, I'm an anthropologist who was specialized in documentation of crafts, persons and tribal, tribal, tribal folk uh, things. I had not much experience of classical Indian art up to that point of time. So, from uh, a very professional documentation of uh, Indian tribal art and folk art to this lifelong passion for Indian miniature art, when did this transformation or progression come about? That is all due to Professor Bian Goswami. Okay. He came already in 1974 okay. for his first lecture at the Riedberg Museum. Okay. And I think he kindled my interest mm -hmm. and my yeah passion, my passion for passion. for Indian in, Indian painting. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, I was mostly working on an exhibition on Jain art. So I collaborated with Jatindra Jain mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we too did field work again in mm -hmm. Rajasthan in South India in Orissa mm -hmm. on uh, Jain art and produced a very fine exhibition together mm -hmm. and two volumes on, on Jain iconography. Mm -hmm. So at the same time I had to produce a catalogue for the Calico Museum on, on reserve dyed textiles mm -hmm. and slowly, slowly the interest in, in Indian miniature painting uh, started and, and uh, took mm -hmm. hold of me. Mm -hmm. So where did you start uh, discovering Indian miniature uh, art? Did it start from Himachal or from some other region of India? No. Uh, it started with the fact that there was a Swiss artist and okay. art historian, Alice Bono. Mm -hmm. uh, she had lived f since 1933 in Benares okay. and uh, came from Zurich mm -hmm. and was at that time a 90-year-old lady. Mm -hmm. and she had assembled a very fine collection of Indian miniature paintings okay. which was on display in 1961 in Venice okay. and I could and the Riedberg Museum was basically a museum of non-European art mm -hmm. but uh, founded uh, with the donation of a German banker Baron mm -hmm. Eduard von der Heid, mm -hmm. who collected practically only sculpture mm -hmm. no paintings we had mm -hmm. When I became director of the Riedberg Museum, there were about 12 Indian miniatures out of which I would think one one could put on display, all the rest okay. was just ordinary stuff. Mm -hmm. So I could convince Alice Bono to give us first 30, then later on 60 Indian miniatures on loan that we could put them on display. That's since 1960? Now we are One. 1978. Eight. Okay. So Goswami already four years annual uh, lectures mm -hmm. and the paintings of Alice Bono. Mm -hmm. And then I could convince her that we could exchange these paintings with other paintings of hers. So okay. that meant constantly learning more about making labels, uh, mm -hmm. thinking of 
dating, of attributions, etc. Mm -hmm. And already at that time, I must say, I, when Professor Goswami came, I asked him to correct my labels and he did mm -hmm. this uh, very friendly. Mm -hmm. So when Alice Bono finally passed away, mm -hmm. I must say, then I made a big exhibition on Alice Bono, or the catalogue of her own work, etc. Mm -hmm. And when she had passed away, mm -hmm. uh, her sister, gave us slowly her co entire collection, which is more than, I would think, 600, 700 paintings. Miniature? Miniatures. Oh, wonderful. So and this is all Indian miniatures? Only Indian miniatures. Okay. Uh -huh. All of them she had acquired uh, in the period between 1933 and, let's say, 60. Okay. So that was now a fundament on which to build. To build okay. And they were selected by an artist who mm -hmm. herself was creative and wanted to mm -hmm. use motifs from Indian painting in her own work, okay. as well as she was interested in uh, construction principles. She wanted to find out mm -hmm. how our miniatures Organized, okay. constructed, okay. etc. Mm -hmm. So this was not an art historical collection, but it was neither art historical nor was it a collection of iconography, but mm -hmm. it was basically a very personal collection. Mm -hmm. So it's not that easy then to make exhibitions. So you need it. Let's say mm -hmm. uh, there was not a full set of a ragamala, or there was nothing mm -hmm. of that sort. Mm -hmm. So you always had lots of gaps you felt which you mm -hmm. wanted to fill in. Mm -hmm. So I slowly, slowly started uh, collecting for the Rietberg Museum. At the same time, mm -hmm. I felt to get, it's fine to read all the books available, and, mm -hmm. and this is much easier than here. Uh, you, in, in, you can get, you can buy books, you can uh, get books from other libraries easily. Mm -hmm. So this basic knowledge I acquired from the books and I built up a very fine library on Indian painting in the Rietberg right. Museum too. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I felt it's now necessary to, to get more drawn into them, to know where did the painters live, mm -hmm. uh, how did they work, what is the environment of, of where they had been working. Mm -hmm. So I regularly traveled now to Himachal Pradesh and fortunately I had become one state guest, or twice in fact, state guest in Orissa, okay. through Sanjukta Panigrahi, my, my then friend. Mm -hmm. And then the Himachal government invited me too as a state guest once. Mm -hmm. And now we prepared the base for an exhibition which took place in 1990, I suppose, yes. uh, Pahari Masters. Pahari Masters yeah. And I felt, how can I uh, make an exhibition on painters who had, uh, who had workshops in Chamba or in Kulu or in Gule or in Kangra without so knowing the difference of the areas and not mm -hmm. knowing what kind of, not only landscape, houses, workshops, who is what crafts are there, mm -hmm. uh, are there difference in jewellery, uh, which are still there, which you can find in paintings, etc. Mm -hmm. So I really intensively uh, travelled now in Himachal mm -hmm. and uh, managed every year then uh, to go there first for a period, let's say, of two to three weeks alone. Mm -hmm. Then every second year my family would come and settle in one place mm -hmm. and I would then go from there and, and do whatever was necessary. And I was very much helped in, the, in these years by V.C. Ori, the then the director of the State Museum in Imarche, okay. whom we invited to our home too. He came to Zurich and we spent a lot of time and, and he really uh, completely unselfishly uh, showed me where to go, what to do, etc., and, and enhanced my knowledge tremendously. So through the Himachal government I got extremely pleasant persons to travel with, and I have 
a very large archive now of Fahari medics. Fahari photographs. Uh -huh. To make the very point, mm -hmm. whilst I was director of the Rietberg Museum, mm -hmm. I've never in my life bought a single painting, Indian miniature, which was not produced in the same year mm -hmm. in India. I've never been in these years with any Indian dealer looking at things yet in his shop, in mm -hmm. Delhi nor anywhere in India. Mm -hmm. yeah? I've not touched any dealer's works here in India. Then how they did you build up your uh, collection? Only by buying uh, paintings on the international market. Okay, not, not nothing, from here, because nothing. of the... Not even mm -hmm. looking at paintings here mm -hmm. and say, how nice is your painting? If I, I, I wonder if it were outside the country, I would buy it. N even this, I just did not do ever. But why? I just like not to, to get into, in, into any conflict with the legislation of India. The Antiquity yeah. Act, yeah. Which, is, yeah. uh, which is very Since outdated. 1972. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I understand. No. So this oh. is not, this, this I was uh, very much concerned mm -hmm. and I didn't want to, 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 to make myself mm -hmm. uh, person on grata in this country. But <laughs> tell me, was there enough available in the international market oh to yeah. build that kind of a... Oh yeah. Was oh yeah. it? Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, if one really searched, mm -hmm and was not sitting in one's museum, but traveled, went, mm -hmm. I every year twice mm -hmm. did the round Paris, London, Amsterdam, home. Mm -hmm. If it was more for African art, mm -hmm. I, it was including Brussels. Mm -hmm. Then came New York, later, but in the early t time, basically the market was London. Mm -hmm. And I started with very humble, means mm -hmm. yeah I started with small sums because I was very unassured mm -hmm. of my own knowledge of my own taste mm -hmm. and if and at that time or even nowadays I mean mogul paintings are much more expensive than Pari paintings mm -hmm. so I stuck to Pari paintings because I wanted to stay on a lower uh, financial base mm -hmm. uh, and this was, vi uh, this was a wise uh, decision, decision of myself mm -hmm. and I would like to point out mm -hmm. the Rietberg Museum mm -hmm. is not an in a museum of Indian art it's an of non-European art non so they had a very strong Chinese mm -hmm. a very good African mm -hmm. a, a very nice Japanese mm -hmm. collection American Indians too a bit of Indonesia etc and I purchased far more mm -hmm. financially mm -hmm. African art than Indian art and in all these 30 years I was director senior director of the CM Rietberg I've not bought a single Indian sculpture mm -hmm. stone sculpture we got gifts mm -hmm. but I never even made use gifted money to buy a sculpture yeah? but if there was in a private house a sculpture and it came to the museum it's fine but I did not buy any Indian sculpture I only bought Indian paintings now since we talk about these problems now mm -hmm. I, I would like to point out mm -hmm. that I make a big difference between privately owned art mm -hmm. and national art uh, Everything which is underground, was mm -hmm. once underground, is archaeologi ar archaeological finds. These belong to the nation, basically. If mm -hmm. the nation wants to sell them, that's their thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not private property. Mm -hmm. So I, can, I think the Antiquity Act mm -hmm. concerning sculptures mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. But what is private, that mm -hmm. means jewelry, textiles, mm -hmm. Paintings, paintings, everything which was given in dowry formally or was inherited in yeah. a family mm -hmm. is private and should be treated as private. Uh, Indian paintings were always given from one state one to the state. other yeah. or uh, mm -hmm. when, uh, when you had two, when a Raja had two daughters, yeah. even a family. set was cut it's into strategy. two parts and one part went to this daughter, the other to the other one. Mm -hmm. And there were no boundaries like this. Mm -hmm. So I feel that it's a f mm -hmm. it's um 
in an ethical point of view, mm -hmm. uh, to collect paintings internationally is fine. I mm -hmm. have no problem with that. Uh, I would like to go back to your show of miniature art, Pahari painters yeah. uh, in 1990. Thereafter, two things happened. Suddenly, the price of miniature art in the international market uh, it rose because there was a mm, an auction in 1991 at Sotheby's and it was reported that suddenly this art became very expensive. Yet uh, your museum worked, it went ahead on its research of miniature art and 10 years later you of course came up with this larger exhibition. Was it thereafter difficult for you to uh, get more works? And how did you decide about going into this very extensive research of Indian masters? It certainly is always a problem it, it, that mm -hmm. exhibitions create markets. First of all, they create awareness. awareness. And it is unavoidable. If you don't create awareness, mm -hmm. uh, even, even there is no growth in our uh, appreciation of, 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 of artists. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can only say uh, we were a at least as mm -hmm. influential in the African art market as we are in the, in the Indian mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. uh, number one. Number two, uh, as a museum person, mm -hmm. you have to invest in what you understand mm -hmm. before you make everybody know about it. Mm -hmm. So in principle one should certainly buy the things you want to show before you show them. Mm -hmm. This is not possible usually because whatever is in private hands only comes slowly, slowly. And, mm -hmm. and on the other hand it is true at the time of Pari Masters, mm -hmm. I bought for the Riedberg Museum mm -hmm. major objects at that time. Mm -hmm. Exactly in the preparation of it, it happened. Mm -hmm. But these are incidental things. You can't. You, you can plan them. No, you mm -hmm. can't plan them. You, mm -hmm. But you are involved. And mm -hmm. already organizing an exhibition is like hunting. You, you search for objects, you know this and this collectors, you, you go make your rounds, you, 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 you see the art dealers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is the life of a museum person. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. uh, do, so how did you expand uh, it? I mean, how, when did this thought come to you? That you, should, now we should, you should know that the annual amount the municipality of Zurich gives us for purchases mm -hmm. And that is what I want to say when I start, we have Japanese, Chinese, Indian. Mm -hmm. The whole amount was at that time about $100,000. Yeah? This is compared to prices which we are dealing now with, just nothing. Whether that is now African art or Japanese art or Chinese art, 100000 you can do practically nothing. Yeah? These are small, small bits here and there and, and uh, that, yeah, uh, uh, these are, so what you need is a clientele of patrons who are supporting you and whom you get involved in the whole i wanted to say game but i don't process. know the best process, process. Mm -hmm. so i was extremely lucky oh, when i arrived in zurich i found a very fine elderly lady uh, Lucy Rudolph, she passed away many years ago and she came from an, she was a very rich old lady, the only rich lady in Zurich I suppose who still had a kind of salon where gentlemen she invited uh, once every two weeks and uh, only she and, and a group of, of, of I gentlemen. Who I've of read about such things, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, her grandfather was one of the inventors of the khaki color, a uh, dye, khaki okay. dye stuff. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, factories in 
Manchester and since Khaki dyed material was quite important for the British army in India yes. and she felt it would be nice if some of her money is used for representation of India in, in Switzerland. How interesting. Isn't it? It's fun. Very interesting. <laughs> but you have to make her aware that that is a good possibility to use her money too. <laughs> so Lucy uh, was my first great supporter in uh, giving me money to make purchases of Indian paintings in her name. Yeah. And then the second person uh, was Balthasar Reinhardt and his wife. <laughs> they again, uh, uh, Balthasar uh, lived for seven years in India and was working at that time for Volkert Brothers and okay. made the uh, combination of Volkert Brothers with Tatas to form Voltas as a firm. Okay. So again... There's so much history involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah but <laughs> but hmm. this is not destiny. This you have to organize, you know. You have to bring... And I met Balthasar Reinhardt at Lucy Rudolph's place and, okay. and could convince him that this would be fine. And for instance, he, he bought for the Riedberg Museum the first Mogul painting, which I... Which I showed him and uh, it's a lot of running, running, working, uh, it's not, it's less writing applications but making people sensitive to the quality and uh, I will never forget that uh, Balthasar Reinhardt once asked me, uh, the painting you want to buy, does it have to be uh, enlarged for a postcard? You know, this is the difficulty. If you, if you want to make somebody to be, as an art museum mm. to buy you a Picasso, that's a simple thing. Mm. Because this is large and, and everybody can see the label, this is a purchase by this. But a miniature is tiny, it cannot be displayed too much because it, it should not get too much light. So uh, it's work to, to, to convince people not to buy one. One thing is you get easily by, by your, your friends of the museum. But continuous support is work. But you made miniature art larger than life. It's my so life. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you see, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's then fun. Uh, mm -hmm. When Balthasar uh, Reinhardt was very old, mm -hmm. he told me uh, the collection of Indian paintings I could give to the museum is one part of my life, you know? He felt really as a donor that he has achieved something and, he is and there is, uh, they will be there uh, at least for quite some time. So like this, one tries sometimes, one is not successful, but I, with Indian paintings I was successful. None of them would have uh, helped me in buying an African art piece. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's a completely different kind of clientele. You had to Indian this was always a kind of, yes, mm -hmm. and Indian paintings again is mm -hmm. very different uh, the way you have to sensitize people about it. So when you saw the first miniature art, Indian miniature art, could you visualize that one day it would go this far? I mean, today miniature art is, is big. Uh, I read that the last work, uh, I think at Christie's, it was sold for 2.25 million. Is that true? I wouldn't know prices anymore because this is outrageous. We cannot. I'm, outrageous. I'm not. It's out of out of. Prop I mean, it's not out of proportion. Mm -hmm. huh? It's just out of my proportion. But uh, mm -hmm. compared uh, to world art, I think that's it, it, the prices will still go so higher. They have to go higher. I mean, this is how many how many lines of paintings exist in the world, and 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 what status will he have on the lo uh, in the long run? Uh, as a global artist, I mean, he will be uh, one of the greatest 18th century artists worldwide. Uh, Gainsborough, Reynolds, Boucher, all these are 18th century artists. Nainzuk will be one of them. So, prices is, is, is demand, and there will be demand. Apart from collecting miniature art, you have also, I would not use the word invested, but uh, taken a lot of interest in the research of this, the way the master's names have been now researched, mm -hmm. uh, which has again added to uh, 
its popularity. Yeah. So tell me a little more about how did you go into the research aspect of that? When I went to Africa the first time in 1959-60, I was a young f I was accompanying my father as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So I was the cameraman for my father and I filmed African mask carvers. Okay. And I became fascinated by the quality of the old master compared to his uh, uh, apprentice, etc. Mm -hmm. And I wrote then a 100 page article published by the Berlin Museum mm -hmm. uh, on uh, master carvers from the Dan tribe in Liberia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first ever study on uh, individual. Uh, these are three in individual uh, tribal sculptors, mask carvers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their life story, it's their technique, mm -hmm. and it's their individual style and their oeuvre. Mm -hmm. So I was already, I was 18 at that time, yeah? It's very systematic, mm -hmm. and it, it only shows you from the very beginning mm -hmm. the question of what distinguishes a real master mm -hmm. from somebody who just accidentally can produce mm -hmm. nice, nice yeah. objects yeah. was f for me very essential from, from, from childhood onward. And I am brought up, as I said, in a household with African art. My, we have a, my father has a very fine collection, now it's with us, a fine collection of African art. And from small onward, we were trained in looking at the same type of things, mm -hmm. let's say a figure or a spoon, mm -hmm. and discuss with father quality. Mm -hmm. uh, why is this not only different, why is it better? Mm -hmm. And uh, this kind of connoisseurship I've not acquired. It's it's really it built up over the years. Over the years. Mm -hmm. My sister is an art historian too. My mm -hmm. our younger brother is a journalist. So we have all a bit the same. But mm -hmm. of these, of us three, I'm certainly the one who has gained. I'm the eldest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gained most yes. from my stepfather, by the way. Mm -hmm. But uh, with all that said. Uh, I, I was very fond of that first master African carver mm -hmm. and I felt mm -hmm. he, he deserves much more mm -hmm. uh, response, much more yeah, support, much more, mm -hmm. the word comes in my mind, celebration of, of, of him as a personality. Mm -hmm. and. What remains on the long run from a culture is often the art which is produced. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we always talk even there, the big boss, the chiefs, etc. Mm -hmm. And that sculptor, Look. he was the only really uh, great personality I've met at, at, at when I was 18 in, in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. So like this, I always felt mm -hmm. a, Mr. Anonymous doesn't live here, mm -hmm. you know. It's unfair to these men mm -hmm. if we don't celebrate, celebrate them a bit. Mm -hmm. And exhibition making is not an academic job. It means celebrating a culture mm -hmm. or uh, an individual. Mm -hmm. And this is something often they've not they've missed nowadays in, in, in even very fine exhibitions. But putting them on a, on a pedestal, pedestal and, 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 and let them think mm. what a great person is behind this thing and why should we not try more in depth and, and, and basically again it's Professor Goswami here in the Indian context mm -hmm. in 1968 his article in Mark the family as the basis of style mm -hmm. is the one who pinpoints mm -hmm. that it's not the patron who is responsible for the style but the family of, of artists and he is the one then to, to make not only the genealogists of the artists but to point out how style was from one generation given to the next, but then splitting in different uh, areas. And, and this is highly convincing. So uh, I think this is the future.
And whether we do this now in Himachal or want to discuss it in Bikane or in Kota, or it, it, it would be all the same. And at the same time, uh, you can observe that in workshops, uh, even nowadays, I, I did some research on, on that in, 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 in Orissa. So how come of all these masters, um, you selected Nansuk for the filming? Yeah, is the greatest. Is the greatest? Yeah. If you, uh -huh. if you really, well, it, it's the greatest of the ones we know about now. Mm -hmm. uh, the next generation after Nainzuk, his four sons and mm -hmm. his two nephews, mm -hmm. were ik very, very great painters. Mm -hmm. But we are not research whites now already. At in we don't, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we don't, can't grasp them as individuals yet. Because uh, they produced more series of poetic texts or of, uh, of the Ramayana, for instance, uh, which does not reveal as much of their own, on, on, of their individual life. Whilst Nainzuk with his patron, uh, Balwan Singh and Zorava Singh, uh, we can trace him far more of, the, of his own history. Inter okay. So it's, he's, he's at the, in our time, mm -hmm. the master. Whether the next generation will see whether that Gaudio, Ranja, or Karma, or whatever, or Nika, mm -hmm. uh, they are the great master mm -hmm. we will see. When it came to researching uh, miniature art, you have now brought it to that pedestal. You have given it recognition, which uh, we in India, you know, should have uh, perhaps done something about it. Uh, now, your research into Indian folk art and folk artists. Tell us more about that, and where is it leading? Do we expect one fine day an exhibition of Indian tribal art in Zurich? As I said, coming from African art, mm -hmm. my aesthetics, mm -hmm. my, 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 how should I say, my aesthetic feeling is, is very much for strong forms, for expressive uh, mm -hmm. details. Mm -hmm. And I was certainly very much interested in, 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 in tribal forms the moment I saw them in, in Gujarat. Mm -hmm. and Hakubai, my friend, uh, has a very uh, similar attitude towards uh, tribal uh, forms. So, this was now 1968-71 when we spent several seasons in tribal areas in South Gujarat. And when I became director of the Riedberg Museum in 1972, in February, mm -hmm. already in autumn, I made my very first large exhibition in a very large hall, which was called Anon India, Tribal Art, Folk Art, Classical Art. Okay, so, so already you already in did. 72, 72, I did this. Oh God. And, and I must say, there, there was, was another, another exhibition which mm -hmm. Hakubai was involved by Stella Kramrisch in Philadelphia, which had the same title, Unknown India. I was not aware. And my exhibition was called Unbekanntes Indian in German, so it was not. And the it, same. It was not. It was very different. But uh, this was basically Gujarat material which we had mm -hmm. and uh, I could there was some tribal art in in, 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 in in the Basel ethnographic museum we had some modern terracottas mm -hmm. and but it was a very fine exhibition with large size photographs some films etc and then when I worked in 1978, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sanjukta Panigrai, as I said, uh, made me a state guest in Orissa, mm -hmm. and we researched on exactly the same topic for Orissa. Mm -hmm. So we made an Orissa exhibition uh, together with my friend Dinanath Pati, mm -hmm. uh, who was at that time curator at the local museum, 
and later on he was for Lalit Kala Academy uh, secretary in Delhi and uh, he is now director of the Alice Bourne Institute in Benares by the way. Okay. Uh, so we two together with Sitakant Mahapatra mm -hmm. uh, made that uh, very large exhibition in which again in the catalogue always we distinct uh, section, let's say, woodwork, mm -hmm. tribal woodwork, folkish woodwork, and classical wo woodwork, or painting, or mm -hmm. textiles, always these three mm -hmm. sections, or marks, or uh, forms. Mm -hmm. So this is always in my, in my mind, and now that I'm retired, mm -hmm. I want to uh, clean up my desk certainly. I have now to I have a very large archive of photographs which I get scanned now and I want to get make public and if I find an Indian institution which really cares for it I would certainly give them a set of everything uh, with great pleasure if it is kept. So right now I return to this Folk, folk and tribal things. Uh, in, in, in folk, I'm, uh, it's basically textiles what I'm interested in. All right. What, what area of textiles? Gujarat only. Oh, Gujarat. But uh, I did with Hakubai quite very good uh, research on, on in, in Kutch, which mm -hmm. we have never published. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, on Bandani and and mm -hmm. and ikat forms and uh, embroideries of all different so was kinds. Was it just documentation, or it was you only went docu no, only, only documentation? documentation. Uh, since uh, you uh, researched folk, tribal, and classical, all the three forms in Odisha, uh, did you find some commonalities? Some in in interplay. Oh, yes, interplay. yes, yes. Certainly, yes. certainly, yes. Co constantly, yes. constantly. I mean, these are not uh, strictly. Uh, Divisions Demarket with no, 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 no. They are mm -hmm. interrelated spillover. and spill over, and mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. and one should never forget uh, mm -hmm. very often uh, what we consider tribal art mm -hmm. are things made for the tribal population by uh, caste craftsmen. Mm -hmm. So the potters, kumbars in Gujarat, make terracottas only for specific tribal people. And and this is they are not tribals themselves. Like uh, Mughal painters are not Mughals; they are painters for the Mughals. So one should not forget that. Uh, for instance, in, in I have a very nice study which I want to to, to finalize soon. Uh, in the 70s, no 60s, in fact, uh, we worked on small clay terracotta images mm -hmm. which women produced mm -hmm. and we, for the tribals, okay. for the local Adivasis in, who, Gujarat, in, in, Gujarat, in, Gujarat. in Gujarat, which they used mm -hmm. as offerings. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. these are human figures mm -hmm. and if you show me some, I can easily say, oh, this comes uh, from this, uh, this region or from this workshop. Mm -hmm from Son Valot or Mandvi or whatever, Viara. Mm. Now, the interesting fact is that they are made by the potter's wife, women. Mm. Now, usually the, the girl working in uh, Songat comes from Viara. Now, it's very interesting. We have now several generations of such women's things, which we can still see. Mm. And now it is the interesting to find out is the, what is the influence of the mother, what okay. is the mother's in-law's influence stylistically on these women, women's products. How interesting. Yeah? So have you written about this? Uh, no, I've, I've, it, it, it's all in the computer but not published. I would have loved to return mm -hmm. after 30 or more years, 40 years now nearly, and uh -huh. add the next So now you would like to study. But uh, it's mm -hmm. It's a bit difficult in Gujarat to do research in Adivasi areas. To see how areas. they are doing now, how the influences mm. are. Mm. Uh, another thing I would like to understand the way... But you see again, mm -hmm. the problem of style and individual mm -hmm. and how it is given from one generation to the other mm -hmm. and what is the impact of a personality, mm -hmm. whether it's mother or mother-in-law or mm -hmm. daughter herself, uh, is, is, uh, started, was already there in, in the 70s. 
in another medium it is terracotta the same in miniature art as well. basically the same it's just mm -hmm. another kind of uh, iconography and sensibility and, and uh, so do, you, do you find some masters uh, in contemporary miniature art did you oh yeah you i mean uh, one has to know i mean uh, uh, if you collect indian paintings you you have to know not the Indian market, but you have to know what is produced here today in, in India. Mm -hmm. And there are fantastic, fantastic masters of Indian paint, miniature painting. Uh, the Which are the regions where you find them? This is a very personal choice now, but uh, the greatest uh, in, in this region here is Vijay Sharma of, of Chamba. A fantastic man and, and, and a man who has great knowledge about uh, styles, about history, about uh, oh, he's, he's a full-fledged art historian. In Rajasthan did you? In Rajasthan. I certainly know the Jaipur painters and I've, mm -hmm. I've been there already in the 70s and, 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 and watched them. You will find in the Nine Suk film mm -hmm. uh, Manish Soni, who is the mm -hmm. one of the great painters in, in Bilwara. He comes from a very renowned uh, painter's family, who are specialists basically in pitch wise. But Bilwara school is of great quality, and uh, though it's outside. Uh your domain, I would still like you to comment on why is it that in Indian art institutions nothing has been done to promote Indian miniature art. It's not even taught. Dr. Goswami tried to introduce it in Punjabi University a few years back. Beyond that, nothing happens in miniature art. I think mini Indian miniatures were not really collected and were not in, in, in India itself on a larger scale. I mean, the general awareness was not available. Everybody collected jewelry or, or fine textiles, but paintings had not really a prestige value in, in a normal upper middle class household. So the, the difficulty in painting, miniature painting, is that you, you can't hang it on the wall. It's, 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 you, it's, Time, uh, it's light doesn't. Visible. It's so not visible, and it doesn't make the owner uh, a connoisseur if if he has that. So the, the group of real connoisseurs is small, and uh, but you mentioned prices. But contemporary Indian artists fetch for their things even higher prices than you can fetch for for a beautiful uh, uh, miniature of, of the 18th century so this is a bit out of balance anyhow according to my uh, understanding so if there is no awareness in the society how can you I, mean, I, have, I have this observation that uh, miniature art as such is more appreciated for its very fine aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, you know, the issues, the concerns of contemporary life, you know, the urban alienation, you know, the stress, the competitiveness, particularly in a country like India. Uh, one assumes that art would reflect, you know, contemporary concerns. Uh, but one would not find these expressed in the miniature art. So could, could that be another reason why it's not as popular? But we all need from time to time a place of quietness, a place to uh, go to and shut the doors and meditate. Space. And for that mm -hmm. Indian paintings are the most delightful thing to do. I mean, you, uh, an African ask, a mask is not a place, is not a thing for me to meditate on. But an Indian painting or a, a Chinese scroll, these are things I really, uh, or, or uh, romantic German uh, watercolor, are things you can really enjoy f for yourself in a small company. Uh, Indian paintings were to be looked in a small group, intimate. You took them in hand. Uh, for instance, uh, when you come to the Riedberg Museum, you will see that we put 
our Indian miniatures slanting, not hanging on the wall. They were taken in hand, they were looked like this, not like this. So it's a completely different way of looking. Uh, the same is now with the Ninesuk film. Uh, the film, the Ninesuk film is a rather slow meditative film. Uh, if you come in a rush and you want just to grasp it and, and make, get benefit out of it, you lost it. It's, 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 it's elusive in that case. And it's the same with paintings. If, if one doesn't have a bit of time, uh, I, c I know some pa collectors who look like paintings like this. Mm -hmm. This is fine to make a first selection, but really to, to not only to enjoy, but to see a painting needs the right atmosphere, needs to sit down, it's to take it in hand, turn it around, uh, uh, look at the composition, look at the colors, see really the eyebrow and the, f and the eyes and, 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 and details and uh, have a magnifying glass for, for where its restoration is done. Uh, you need an ultraviolet light to see uh, where are patches which, which, which were put in later, etc. It's not stuck. You, you don't get it like this. You put it very beautifully. And, and it's necessary, you know. And it's 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 it makes you you content. You you it's. I don't need a cup of tea along with it, but it's very nice to to really and and modern time has changed our way at looking at paintings enormously with through scans where you can make enlargements any size mm. yeah yeah so i can see now on the comp i don't do that much yet i still like to have the original in hand but i have a young uh, success in Riedberg museum in indian painting when i come to his office and he shows me on the computer uh, how he has made scans and you can really on one uh, computer you can have 20 eye forms and you can really see the difference it's enormous it's it's it, it we will have a completely different look at at at, at indian miniatures in the next 10 years because, because of, of, the of, technology. of technology advancements but it's still do you think it it, it is still a kind of a elitist choice the celebration is missing that's in the that. point in that in that it they handle things differently they will not have that emotional uh, joy in it but uh, it's necessary and, and and it will be a big step ahead in the next 20 years in in in, uh, in seeing indian paintings in its appreciation that i don't know whether appreciation will follow it's but first it, it's first it, uh, really a technical thing which they will do but if they see more careful more precise mm -hmm. It's, it's a step ahead, you know. I, even, even, you see, to see the master in a painting needs a trained eye. Uh, you have to have seen hundreds of similar things before you see what really is the difference between this and, and the ordinary thing. And uh, if people only work in, 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 in with books and you see always the same reproductions, it's not sufficient. It's and therefore, in a museum, you need a bulk of paintings. You need from fresh to the finest. You can't say I only I throw out this and this. No, it, for, for teaching yourself, not teaching others. It's always very important to see even mediocre things and 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 then and, and put them next to the other and see why this is now really a completely different category of quality than that. Um, I would also like to understand there is a, you know, there is a kind of a reinvention of classical arts all over the world, and it's not only it's not only in the context of visual arts. You know, even in India, uh, there is kind of a, a rekindling of interest in Indian classical music. You mm. know, even Indian old film mm. music. Mm. So it somewhere reflects that nothing great is happening in contemporary art scene. Would you agree to that? Or ha, our art scene is very lively nowadays and if you really want to keep pace with it, it, it demands a lot of energy and time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think 
there is some need for quietness, as I pointed out before. That's why that is why this comes in now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 if you have everything, mm -hmm. then suddenly some small rooms, w which uh, w where you you quiet where, where you quiet. Uh, mm -hmm. My father-in-law, mm -hmm. he, he has a very beautiful house, mm -hmm. and his father built it. Mm -hmm. And underground, mm -hmm. there is a small room which they call the ashram. Ashram. Always, the ashram. Okay. And the ashram mm -hmm. has a door which you can hardly find because there is some something hanging in front of it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go down, and then you are in. In the basement, and there is only slightly some light coming in. There's a nice place to sit. Mm -hmm. It's all built 1910 or 20 around, yeah. And there, there are some Indian paintings hanging there already, and and like this, it's 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 a very quiet place. Is it in Switzerland? It's in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In 1910, it was 1920. 20. It was called an ashram. It was called his ashram. His ashram. His ashram. Uh, yeah. It's it is you, you mentioned I mentioned Balthasar Reinhardt as his yeah. father's place. Yeah. So he, there is some Schopenhauer literature, uh -huh. but there is some on the I Ching of the Chinese, and there is something Indian. It's it's whatever. It's weird, but mm -hmm. it's it was his. He, he would not have called it meditation room, but it, it was the place where he could. Ashton is a better word. Go for meditation. himself and and yeah. no business, no family, nothing. But it was not to be. It, it even nowadays hardly anybody would 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 be uh, permitted to go down there. You know, like this is the way where I want. <laughs> and I'm still a bit older to look at my paintings. <laughs> you mm. also paint? No. Well, you, you don't. I don't paint. Mm. But when I was a schoolboy, mm -hmm. my father said, "Oh, Eberhard." Mm. Is not good in music. Mm -hmm. Let him go to a painter and take mm -hmm. painting lessons. Mm -hmm. So I regularly went to a painter and learned quite good techniques of painting. Mm -hmm. And you realize this is already from this was my father's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a lot of, of 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 how things are made. And but. Uh, I can't paint. No. This miniature art is so much related to Indian mythology. So, mm -hmm. did you also go into studying Indian mythology yeah, when you? You have to. I mean, you have to understand it. I, I'm not very good in languages, so I, I've mm -hmm. only done this in, in translations. But mm -hmm. certainly, and when you have a painting, you want to know what is its content, and you have to know. You have to translate uh, if there's mm -hmm. some inscription on it, and. I must thank Professor Goswami very much that he helped me and, and put me on the right tracks in, in all the things. And sometimes he said, check there, and, and then I had to do it myself, but very often he translated for me too. And, and for the Ragmalas, did you also understand Indian oh classical yeah. music? Oh yeah. Uh, in fact, I planned a larger Ragamala exhibition once with Ragunath Pranik, Panikrai, Sanjuktana's mm -hmm. husband. Uh -huh. And we have already uh, have short versions of different ragas and mm -hmm. the alap. Uh, mm -hmm. He showed me then what, uh, and he spoke about mm -hmm. why the alap was done in this and this form mm -hmm. and how we could possibly relate this then to the iconography of the paintings. Yes. Yeah. So this is already prepared, but you always prepare in advance exhibitions and, and some of them never materialize. So they are in some drawer. Thank you so much <laughs> for sparing so much of your time.